Good morning. This is Barry Knapp with Ironsides Macroeconomics. It's 6.40 a.m. Mountain Time. This is the um, free version of our weekly summary, our weekly note. The note this week was titled, Is This Time Different? And um, this was the title of a speech by Vice Chair for Monetary Affairs of the Federal Reserve, uh, Philip Jefferson, last week. And we just couldn't help ourselves but to... Um, take on his note a little bit and provide our own perspective on the various episodes he described through easing cycles following uh, tightening cycles. We think he got a lot of things wrong. So um, that was the uh, the title of our note. The note itself was structured uh, into four parts in essence. The first part was uh, the comings and goings of the market we described as tech boom and bond bust. We then um, titled the section around Vice Chair Jefferson's note as elements of 67, 80, 95, and 98. We then had a section titled What to Watch, which was a preview of what's coming this week. Last week was a little bit devoid of data. This week, the data picks up, but the really important data comes the following week when we get labor market data, and we can explain that uh, shortly. And then we um, dug in a little bit on our portfolio and sector allocation. We made some interesting changes to our models, which you could see if you were a uh, full subscriber. Um, we don't offer that to the, uh, the free subscribers. And uh, dug in a little bit on our current market uh, views. So what's, Im what's important, we thought last week, of course, NVIDIA um, and the Gen AI boom is the dominant theme in the market. But uh, underneath that, we also had quite a bit of Fed speak, uh, Fed minutes, and um, made it clear that they're in no hurry to cut rates. We had two tricky bond auctions, a 20-year auction that tailed three basis points, a 30-year tips auction. We always like to watch as a real sign of demand in, for longer maturity uh, treasuries. This week, we get auctions in the belly of the curve, and the banking sector is crucial there. Banks picked up their demand for treasuries a little bit late in the year after the pivot party, but um, that demand may wane and this week's auctions could be uh, could, could be quite tricky. Now, the sell-off in the bond market, which has been considerable so far this year, not enough to derail the tech boom um, and potential capital spending bust, but if it picks up in velocity, it could be enough to create a risk-off event. That's the thing to really watch from our perspective that uh, could stall the, the rally here. So moving on to uh, Jefferson's speech, um, we think what they, they continue to get wrong is misunderstanding the impact of QE on uh, the longer term rates and what it means in terms of the shape of the yield curve. We hear no Fed officials ever talk about the deep inversion of the yield curve. And so one of the things that was left out <clears throat> of Jefferson's speech was what happened in 1980, which was the deep inversion of the yield curve that started a chain of events that destroyed the main supplier of mortgage credit at that time, the thrift or savings and loan industry. Uh, that should have entered into his discussion. We think he learned the long, wrong lessons from 1967. If you're looking at the um, uh, video version of this uh, podcast here, you'll see our chart that shows what happened to healthcare inflation after the launch of Medicare, Medicaid, and how um, fiscal policy really was the driver in the early stages of the great inflation, not monetary policy, although that continues to be the Fed's narrative. We then went on to talk about 95 and 98, dug in a little bit there um, from a policy perspective, and um, we'll give a little bit of a nod to our former neighbor and friend, Dan Ives, in his note last week where he said it's more like 95 and 98. We agree with that from a, a capital spending tech boom, but 98 um, is an interesting analog as well because we were having, you know, we were on the backs of the Asian currency crisis, which evolved into a Russian default long term capital management's travails. And that's uh, somewhat reminiscent of the problems that are uh, existing in China today, which ultimately we, we think could lead to a devaluation of the, the Chinese currency. But on balance, we would say we're on a fiscal path similar to 1967. Uh, the banking system is struggling with the curve inversion like it was in 1980. We've said repeatedly this is more like 1980 than 2008 from the banking uh, 
prop perspective. And um, this is a tech boom like the 90s and probably more like 95 than 98 right now, meaning it's in the earlier stages. So this week, <clears throat> manufacturing data, bond auctions, uh, but the labor market data the following week is what to really watch. We then went on and uh, talked a little bit about our justification for getting long the Nikkei and dug into that and then um, made some more enhancements to our uh, portfolio and sector allocation product. We have it uh, broken down by percentages. We've added volatility measures to show you the, the risk of your portfolio if you follow our recommendations. And again, those would be good reasons to become a full paid subscriber. So that's it for me this week. Barry Neff from Ironsides. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.